What's up everyone? It's Tuesday, July 6, 2021. It's a toasty 91 degrees Fahrenheit, 33 Celsius, and it's around 2.15 in the afternoon. Today, I'm going to walk through the New York City neighborhood of Brownsville, historically the most dangerous neighborhood in the city for violent crime. But I'm going to show you today, it's not all that bad. There's a lot of cool people who live here, they work very hard, and a lot of great places. So, let's get this walk started. I'm at the intersection of East 98th Street and Sutter Avenue. I just got off the train, number three. Now, Brownsville's bounded by Crown Heights to the north, Bed-Stuy and Cypress Hills. And East New York is on its east. Canarsie is on the south and East Flatbush is on the west. This neighborhood started off as a Dutch farming community, but there was a person named William Sudam who parceled the land and he didn't really go into um, good economic times with the land. So what he did was he had to declare bankruptcy and he failed to pay his mortgages. So Charles S. Brown of Usopus, New York took over the land at an auction and he actually advertised Brownsville. Well, it wasn't called Brownsville at the time. It was actually called New Lots. But this area was subdivided and it was marketed to the Jewish who were living in Lower Manhattan at the time. And this area became known as Brown's Village. So that's where the name Brownsville came from. So what happened was a lot of the Jewish from Lower Manhattan moved over here and they immigrated here. And it was predominantly a Jewish neighborhood all the way up into the 1950s. But even in the 1930s, a lot of African Americans started moving into the neighborhood because it was um, more affordable here and they were able to purchase property or move in here. Now what happened in the 1950s was there was a big change in this neighborhood because the New York City Public Housing Authority, NYCHA, uh, led by Robert Moses, a lot of public housing projects were built in the neighborhood and it brought a lot of new immigrants into the neighborhood, a lot more African Americans and Latinos. And there were efforts to um, integrate all the communities together, the African Americans, Latinos, and the Jewish, but it didn't really prove successful because many of the Jewish, they couldn't really um, handle the, handle the, um, gosh, I'm forgetting the word now. Hey, that's me, yeah, Action Kid, I'm in Brownsville today. Awesome, man. I watch you every time. Thank you. I watch you every time. Yeah. Yeah, was this good? Yeah, we're good. You were here before. Mm hmm You're back here again. Yeah. There's a, there's a pizza shop that invited me. I was like, I got to check it out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh? Yeah, the villain uh, shop, I think they call it. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. They don't open till later, so I'm going to come else, back when around. When is going to be on? I'll try to do it up this week, so. Beautiful. Yeah, man. All take right, it bro. easy. Take care, brother. All right. You too. Take care. Yeah, that was pretty cool, you welcomed me. Um, so what happened was, yeah, the Jewish and the African Americans, they couldn't integrate all the way, so as a result, many of the Jewish moved out of the neighborhood. This area has been depressed for a long time. There really, I felt like there really wasn't enough um, opportunity for people in this area. It was always a challenging area to live in just due to the large amount of housing projects and um, lack of affordability too. Many people couldn't really make it out here. I've been to Brownsville before. I did a walk through here and that was a pretty good um, video I did. It's funny because um, 
that same video that I did last time walking through here, there were thunderstorms that came in and there's thunderstorms threatening to hit the same area again. So I hope that doesn't happen. So there's a few famous people who have their roots in Brownsville. Some of them include Sid Gordon, Red Holzman, Larry King, and Mike Tyson. I think Mike Tyson, he was in the Van Dyke houses. Here's Howard Avenue and Sutter Avenue. There's people who say that Brownsville will never gentrify and gentrification is a term where there's new residents who move in who displace the older residents and they feel like it's because there's a large amount of public housing projects here that it will never do that. Most of the main commercial street of Brownsville is on Pitkin Avenue. On Sutter Avenue is ma mainly residential. And in a few blocks, we're actually going to um, encounter one of those main housing projects. There's a lot of them here. I don't really know all the names of them, but like I said, there's Van Dyke houses. I think there's Bra Brownsville houses. What's the other one that, uh, I had it off the top of my head. I forgot it already. Yep, I forgot the name already, but maybe we'll find out when we head over there. A lot of Brownsville, by the way, can be categorized within the East New York neighborhood. East New York really is like a large area in New York. But past the L train is really where East New York begins. This is a really nice public school in the area. Looks very modern. They've got a nice track and field. This is a uh, public school 156. And also they have free summer meals here. I still am really surprised that the city still has that program where people can go into those schools at certain times and get free meals. I think it's a great program. It helps a lot of people who really need it. It's also a shame too that a lot of that food that doesn't get picked up over there gets thrown out. I've talked to the staff running the program there. They only have like a, a day or two to give the food away and then if no one picks it up they throw it out. So. Please, if you are in need of food, anyone can go in there and pick up some food. Don't let it go to waste. Here's Saratoga Avenue. Saratoga is a city in upstate New York. There's actually a lot of um, 
a lot of street names here named after places in upstate New York. This part of Brownsville is mostly quiet private homes like these. They take really good care of their front yards. Nice green grass. This isn't really the dangerous neighborhood that is portrayed in the media at times. Sure, there are violent crimes that happen here, the same as any other neighborhood in the world, but that's very rare. Most people I find are hardworking, and if you don't bother them, then you just mind your own business, that's all. So actually what I was talking about earlier, there's a new pizza bar that opened up and I'll be visiting it probably at the end of this video because they don't open until 3 p.m. So I've got about half an hour until that happens. That's the Villains Hideout pizza bar. It's hot today, you hear these air conditioners running. Oh, I forgot to even mention the public transportation in the area. Um, in terms of subways, the number 3 train and the letter L train serve this area. And there's also a few buses that run through the area. I think the one I'm familiar with is the B82 bus. Is that right? Let me look at it. I've taken it once before. Okay, it's the B83, the B15, and the B14. That's what comes through Brownsville. These are some really nice brick homes. It's 
It's a nice breeze there. So once I get past Rockaway Avenue, you'll really see the tall um, public housing projects come into full view. There has been a lot of criticism of NYCHA, the authority that's responsible for managing it because a lot of repairs don't get done in time and there's a lot of mismanagement at that agency. When these tenement buildings were constructed, many of them had modern facilities and they were very clean and modern. I said modern twice, but yeah, when everything was new, it worked fine, but stuff needs to be maintained and it really is not good for the city to be lacking in its duties, especially when people need essential services like that. All right, so this is Rockaway Avenue. And this is pretty much the center of the main housing projects in the area. This one's Brownsville houses. Very busy street here, you gotta be careful. There's the B60 bus to Canarsie, Brooklyn. Canarsie's name comes from the Canarsie Native Americans who used to live here. These ones over to the left side across the street are much taller than the ones on the right here. I feel like these ones on the right are a little bit newer than the ones constructed over to the other side. I think across the street may also be Brownsville houses.
Oh, I guess not. Let's cross the street and walk through. Oh, this is Langston Hughes. That was the other one I was missing off the top of my head from earlier. Welcome to Langston Hughes. And there's even a plaque on the wall here. I dream, I dream a world where man no other man will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace is past adorned. They chose some really good plaques to put up here. Very inspiring. So right now I'm going to take my walk onto the main commercial area of Brownsville, that's um, Pitkin Avenue. Huh, can I even get out that way? Yeah, there is. There's a route there. Looked like it was a parking lot from where I was before. People are trying their best to keep cool today. It's very hot in the sun. Although when the temperatures drop, that's when the rain's gonna start. Yeah, this is very strange. It is kind of like a parking lot, but at least I could walk through this way. Gotta watch your step too. Hey, what's up? China Pavilion Takeout Restaurant. This is Belmont Avenue and Watkins. There's a lot of stuff happening on Belmont too. Let's go check it out. I couldn't wait to go to Pitkin. I've been on Pitkin many times, but never over here. Divine African hair braiding. It takes a lot of work to get this stuff done. I really commend the workers because I know how tricky it could be rolling all the hair and handling it with fine touches. We got some retail stores across the street, clothing brands, Natasha's Fashion. This store looks like it's Oh, Community Justice Center. Looked like it was closed from the gates, but it's not. This is a really cool street in Brownsville. Nice mural on the street here. Jimmy Jazz. Also Dollar Tree. I think it's good that the Dollar Tree is here because this store brings a lot of 
value to the neighborhood because people historically in this area are lower income than others. At least there's a Dollar Tree that helps people, you know, still get good products for their money. I think the median income here is only 32,000. Yeah, according to Wikipedia, it's 31,252. So it's very low for New York City. A local grocery store, Sea Town Supermarket. This is a beautiful mural here. Yeah, it is. That's small? Yeah, it's amazing. That's like the city Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to uh, put on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. All right, now you got me on here. All right. Take Thank it easy, man. For everybody. Yep. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I know. People say Brownsville is dangerous. Nah. It's not. Nah. No way. It's the people. Of course. That are ignorant mm -hmm. and want to do harm. Yep. But other than that, everybody's too of course. Mm -hmm. Bless you, Yep. Yeah. Take it easy. Right now. Fatima's African hair braiding. There's so many hair braiding places here. Look at all the different styles you can get. Oh my goodness. And it's not just for the woman either. The men can get hair braids too. Here's another major commercial area of Brownsville. Rockaway Avenue. Rainbow fashion. Some of these clothings could be uh, very useful right now. Look at how busy this street is. There's also a subway station for this street, by the way, on the number three. Rockaway Avenue station. There's Rockaway Mini Mall. Dance ten dollars. That's a strange name for a store. Why do they call it ten dollars when they have prices for a dollar ninety nine, three ninety nine, four ninety nine? Oh, it's Denise ten dollars. The tree was blocking the other letter. Here's a local grocery store. $1.99 for a bag of onions. That's a good price. Five limes for a dollar. And it smells very fresh too. And over here is a sidewalk vendor. What are they selling here? Pineapples, mangoes. Really neat. So we've made it to Pitkin Avenue. Definitely the main drag of Brownsville. Commercial area, I 
I should say. Here we've got Boost Mobile, Medical Office. I wonder how this place says Sal and Paul's Pizzeria. Looks good. Is Bargain Land Discount Center. It's great that they have all the fans in the window for people to see. I'm sure people are going to need it right now if they don't have one already. Oh, we got some more commercial places across the street KFC, Taco Bell. There's also Golden Crust Caribbean Bakery. Golden Crust has got some great food. I've eaten there many times. Not this one, but there are other locations. There's Bristol and Pitkin. Also a corner to the McDonald's. I love the design of this footlocker here. Looks like Coney Island, Statue of Liberty, Washington Square Park, Williamsburg Savings Bank Tower, Brooklyn Bridge. Is Thomas Boylan Street. Marino's Isis. I was thinking about it for a second. No thanks.
Pitkin Furniture. Hi. What's going on here? Oh, someone double parked their car. Happens too a lot too much in New York. There are so many stores here in Pitkin. All different types of industries too, as you can see. Shoppers World, your family department store. Looks like they have a large area. Let's see what they sell. Top tech audio, headphones, toasters, coffee makers. And of course we need all our cleaning supplies now. It's a huge store in there. Oh, swimming pool, of course. I could use one right now. Oh, this store moved. Doesn't seem to be too far that they moved though. 1542 Pitkin Avenue. Just over here. Sometimes the store doesn't need all that space and they could save a lot of money on rent by moving just a few stores down. Saratoga Avenue. There's also Pizza Hut and Subway. With all the uh, hair places here, there's also the beauty supply store. I'm sure all the hair salons here rely on that. Here's a local restaurant which seems pretty cool. Hitkin Soul Food and Seafood. It looks very clean. They also describe themselves as New York's number one caterers. Looks pretty good. Here's a local church. Yeah. 
Huh? That's a fan? What is that? No, it's uh, it's called a pocket too. It's a camera. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> too hot today, man. Keep yourself cool. Yeah, yeah. Later. Looks like it's getting busy down there, so I don't want to keep going on Pitkin. I'm going to head back towards Sutter Avenue. This is a really nice residential street in Brownsville. Very quiet homes. And across the street, the same thing. Oh, so these are called um, Brownsville Apartments. Brownsville Garden Apartments, that's what the sign said. Here's another church, St. James Holiness. Usually when you think of churches, you think of the ones in like a Gothic or Neo-Gothic architecture, like St. Patrick's Cathedral. But these are a little bit more simple in design. Let's cross over this way. I hope that garbage gets collected soon because it's piling up and the thunderstorms are coming soon. So I'm actually one block away from the pizza bar, the villain's hideout.
It'd be really cool to see what that place is all about. I don't really like the streets. Way too busy with the cars. This is it right here. Very inconspicuous. You wouldn't even know if it's here because there's no name on it other than the billboard. But this is Villain's Hideout. I'm going to come back here because there is a friend I'm meeting. We're almost back where we started this video. I think I spotted her. Yep. Look who it is. <laughs> this is the friend I said I was going to meet. <laughs> Ming <laughs> from the Bing Buzz. Hi. Oh my gosh. I just came from the train station and someone was like, where are you trying to go? <laughs> You're not one of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And I was like, okay, I'm going to walk now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. What are you doing here? Oh, I, I have work around the area. Yeah? <laughs> nice seeing you here too. Okay. What are you doing? I'm going to go get some pizza now at the Villains Hideout. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Glad to see you highlighting that. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye. Nice you. If Bye. you want some pizza, you can join me. <laughs> I'm going to go shopping, go through shopping now. Okay. Bye. See you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye. So that was very nice to meet Ming. 
she had some work around the area so I was like hey I need to come down here anyway you want to make a cameo on my video All right, let's see what this place is all about. The Villain's Hideout. Fitting name for a quote-unquote dangerous neighborhood. I didn't really experience much forms of danger while I was walking through here. But here we are. The villain's Hideout. All right, so folks, this is the villain's hideout. We got some cool vibes here. All right, so this is the villain's hideout. I didn't think you were going to make it because it's so hot. I know, but I was like, you know what, I got to come here. So this is Letitia, she's the owner, right? Yes, of I am. Villains Hideout. Nice to meet you. You just opened, right? We, we opened, um, it's going on three months. Okay. So we haven't been here very long. All right. But, yeah, but we're excited to be here. Mm -hmm. So come hide out with us. Check us yeah, out. Yeah, I know. It's such a cool spot. And, and Batman cool. comics. So all of the art is donated by local artists. So okay. So they come and they'll do something special for us that's with regard to certain villains. Oh wow! So we have we have like Joker and Harley Quinn and all of those. Look at but that, then we huh? also have other villains that aren't as popular. Yeah, and I like the storefront too. It's like you oh, don't know it yes, until you last spot. It's like wait, I have to double the, back. That's yeah. the idea. That's the idea. <laughs> it's, it's like a speakeasy. Hide out, yeah. Yep. You can hide out with us. <laughs> it's definitely the speakeasy vibe. Think yeah. Of, um, Batman the animated series. Mm -hmm. When they of are in the, in the bar and they only they told the stories about how they almost got Batman. Mm -hmm. That was the idea. Yeah. So yeah, we're really happy happy that you came out. No problem, man. All right. Well, I'm gonna end my video here at the Villains Hideout in Brownsville. If you enjoyed this walk, smash the like button, and I'll see you soon. Bye.